Hello, welcome back to Benutsushi Live Noding. In this episode, I will be sharing uh, the creation of this procedural uh, chair. It's pretty much a generic looking chair, uh, but I, I randomized it just as an example. Currently, if you're looking at the, the nodes and the connection, it looks pretty crazy, but uh, soon you, it will make sense. It's actually pretty simple. Currently, it's probably looking something like this. It's actually it's much simpler and the easiest way is to find some kind of pattern maybe looking at the parts um, uh, and with the chair it's actually quite easy to look at the the parts and the pattern that created each part all right so yeah let's see first of all how this is actually works so currently why is this so many so many chairs that's because I specify 100 chair here I can specify 20 I can randomize it I can specify one or just five and randomize I can actually just simply arrange it in grid instead of randomize but that's a uh, that's another subject okay it's just a simple chair now it's simple this is the output okay um, at the back here we have actually one it, I should have given color to this uh, so one two three four this is the end this is the end output with scratch off there's always like we need to almost always to join the vertices the edges and the face sometimes it's just vertices and ed edges sometimes just vertices and faces but the, those three components can be combined using list join and then you want to perhaps mesh join all of them so instead of four different parts it's combined into a single objects and then finally you have a single objects that can control the rotations and locations for location you can just use perhaps just use plane and then arrange in the grid like I said earlier and then you can randomize the angle etc but that's a stretch of thing the stretch of basic so the end so from all these <clears throat> four different parts right we can already started to see the pattern we have parameters the way I arrange it this is not the best uh, arrangement yet so ideally if you, you have like a complete procedural objects you want to be able to scan for properties so currently it has nothing let me bring this up so let's say this is like a, a complete it's it's a complete um, modular chair a uh, parametric chair it's not perfect but I think it's kind of complete and the way we can make it better if, if I make a, if I make it so it's easier to change the parameter so let's actually do that um, the way to do that is to select the nodes that says a number and here okay let's say that's to change the offset offset oops my keyboard is broken offset uh, back so I rename it and I turn on two 3D view now if we rescan if we scan for props this thing appears appears down there so that's good that's actually better so if you have many objects like this or many nodes select all of them and hold options and then click here now it's gonna appear down there but the naming also important don't forget the naming is important um, let's see just call this one seed offset my oh my F button is broken okay and then we have this number four and twenty this one maybe this, this one shouldn't be there this one the seat height 
see hide. This two shouldn't be there. It's gonna hide it for now. Yeah, it should be this. I just hit H so they're kind of hidden. Okay, let's rescan. So at least now okay, we have control over file, save, rescan. Okay. One, two, three. The seed, um, seed offset and offset. Like, okay, that's also the naming that you need to consider is to make everything consistent so you don't just make a random name so oh, I can have a bigger chair so yeah so far so good they are actually a bit more control this is like the legs high should make it this is while doing live modding I'm also still adjusting this Uh, this is actually chair high like high. legs see thickness this can okay legs sit high oops that's interesting sit thickness okay yeah i think this is okay it's um quite workable the parameter anyway let me continue explaining the seat itself so it's uh, a little bit better I, i'll save the blend again Next time I could just save it as a preset. Oops. Well, all right. Next time. I'm gonna save it as a preset over here. Maybe I can do it now. Chair basic. So currently the way I made it is not it's not 100% modular. A better way, perhaps, is to make this even more modular. So there's like the leg part, the seat, the back part up here, and all this little bit of details. These details can be anything like if you redraw another chair. I mean, some chairs look like this, perhaps made of rattan. There are all kind of types of chair of course so maybe you want to separate this part and make them more modular why is this keep jumping on oh, maps don't worry about it okay let's continue with chair my chair is based on cylinder okay this chair is based on cylinder that's why I have two cylinder nodes here and that's why I have this thing that I hide it's not really necessary, but if I display the, the cylinder, uh, control click, something should appear here. Mm. The preview is not showing, let's me reload. Interesting. Yeah, it doesn't like my viewer node. Oh, I know why. Okay, I know why. This because I'm using separate. So when cylinder becomes separate, I'm really separating every component of the cylinder. So now, now I need to explain. It's better to explain the ones behind it. Control click there. Okay, that's the the back part of the chair. Okay, 
and see you can as you can see I have actually a lot more control here I can actually twist it and do a taper so that's because of the bevel of curve and that bevel of curve is really just a UV connections and it's actually easier to understand once I do this so that's basically the back of the chair I can actually reduce it so now it looks pretty weird it's almost like a art deco chair must be chair like this this one is actually original chair but I'm a, I mean it's just this is just generic okay so that's actually I something that I create using uh, this uh, so there's a circle here that can control where if I want it to be triangle I can do that this is triangle it's not it's not a circle but maybe make it four sided one yeah this looks nice file save so now we cover one part of the chair let's go to the next one There is of course this kind of thing that matrix that goes in into each one of them. Yeah, this matrix part is really just something that link everything together. So there are, if I change the, the height or change the leg, everything's still in the in the right in the correct place. Okay, continue on. Second part. I should I should really just give a color. So that's the matrix in. Okay. Okay, this guy. Control click. That's just the back part. And it's this thing is actually just extrude edge and solidify of the cylinder. So I slice I use this slice once again. And I'm slicing the cylinder back just to get that part of it. It's, it, it's not um, perfect, but it, it can work. I actually kind of made a mistake there, I think. And the next part, let's get rid of this. Um, move, okay, there's this move, and there's another cylinder. This is me, I think, making the leg, okay, yeah, this one is making the leg of this chair. It's quite elaborate, and I can actually randomize this part if I want to yep now it's starting starting to look a little bit strange because it's like mixing mixing style of design but that's the leg part and that's actually working because I'm using I'm using a cylinder basically so there's a cylinder that goes in and I move it etc and I duplicate it here based on something and the duplications if I'm not wrong is also based on number okay this is what this is important this is how i created the leg i think the stepping of the leg 
can make it two, so I have many legs. But yeah, the number, number range and list item. So basically, there's a there's a points that I kind of slice using number range and list items, and this goes into the matrix of the of the of the legs to duplicate the cylinder. This part is slightly complicated, but it works. Once it's become modular, you, I mean, your artist or yourself don't need to care about all these cables or noodle anymore. You just worry about the parameter. Okay, so one more thing is this chair, this bottom part, which is just another extrusion, basic extrusion that goes into the matrix of this extra region um, yeah actually there's nothing there's nothing too clever here it's just like me trying to offset the circle circular part of the cylinder and then I extrude it up it looks super complicated for maybe not it can be simpler extrude at the very end, really, just you just list join the vertices, the polygon data, uh, the face data, or edge data, and then you mesh join it. Now, at this point, you really just can plug into matrix normal and just have like a quick way to arrange the chair. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a it's a quick chair creations so let's say you have nothing in the scene actually grease pencil also need to be deleted collection annotations delete. okay we have nothing in the scene and I will do a bit of magic where's our basic chair Now we have our chair. Quite nice, right? And you can just go under view. Oh, there's scratch up. Okay, scratch up. Scan for props. Sit height. Legs. You have tall chair. You can have shorter chair for mama bear and we have shorter, shorter one for kiddos, for kiddies. Okay, don't make it. Okay, this one needs limit, but you can make smaller one. Yeah, that's how it works basically. Spread job. This is one um, another free chapter from my imaginary book. Hopefully, you find this useful. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.